Hi, this is Unity D tutorial with Bento Studio. Plugin setup. The installation of the plugin is very easy. You just need to import the package in your project. Then click on the Unity D item in the menu bar and click on Sprite Editor. It will open the Sprite Editor window. Don't forget to leave this window open each time you want to use Unity D features. Creating Sprites We are now going to learn how to create a sprite. First, import textures in your project. You can import multiple textures at once with multi-selection and simply drag and drop those textures from project to the scene. Positioning sprites Once you have created sprites, you need to organize them. For this, we use the classic Transform Inspector panel. Here, we set the Z value to create a logical order for our background. Adjusting backgrounds. In our example, the green mountain layer is too high. But if we move it down, the sprite base won't be at the same height as the other sprites. That's why we decide to crop it. We edit the texture in a picture editor and when we go back to Unity, we can see that the sprite has changed. We also see that it's too low, so we move it up. The background is now better. Optimizing background. To optimize our background, we select all the mountains layers and click on the texture to mesh option. With this option, the sprite is being modelized like a 3D software would do it, in one click. Because the sprite now fits perfectly the transparent part, we can use an opaque shader instead of a transparent one. Another amazing new feature of Uni2D is the Grid Sprite Mesh Render Mode. This option allows you to create a very interesting sprite type, because it avoids rendering big unnecessary transparent parts. You can set the degree of grid subdivision using the horizontal and vertical subdivision options. The higher the subdivision is, the more transparent parts are being ignored. Using the pivot points Modifying the position of the pivot point can be very useful. In our example, we can adjust the size of the sky more easily with the pivot at the bottom left than if we had the pivot at the middle position. Using vertex color feature It could be very interesting to clone the sprite to create a richer background, but cloning objects could be very noticeable. Using the Sprite Scale and the Vertex Color option allow you to create a lot of different appearances. Adding some physics. We activate the ground physics with the static option because the ground doesn't move. By default, the collider is set to the less consuming option, convex. But it doesn't work here. Because the ground is concave, we need to use the concave option. We now do the same thing with the rock, but with a dynamic mode. The rock is convex, so it works. Remember that you can change the definition of the collider at any time with the physic mesh option. If the other objects in collision were concave, we should have used our exclusive compound mode.
Adding some animation. Creating sprite animation in Uni2D is amazingly simple. Just drag and drop your sprite list containing all your frames and maintain shift when you drop them on the scene. That's it. Animation and physics. We start by creating an animation with our sheep. We create an empty game object used as a root for our animation. It will contain the horizontal and vertical translation of our sheep. Then we add the animated sprite under the root. Once the animation is done, we activate the physics on the sheep by clicking on the eSchematic option. This option allows the sheep to move according to the animation and simultaneously interact with the physics world. Controlling sprite animation In the previous scene, the sheep kept on walking even if his destination goal had been reached. We can stop his motion using animation events. Here is the code which controls the end of the animation. Back into the editor, we select the function we just created and allow the ship to stop. Multi-atlassing system one of the most amazing features of Uni2D is the totally new atlasing system. Just select all the sprites you want and click on Create Atlas. That's all. Atlasing allows you to combine all the sprites in one or more textures, optimizing the render process. Bone Skeletal feature This exclusive feature allows you to deform a sprite in real time in a blazingly fast way. First, we create a sprite. We open the Skeletal Animation Editor and activate the grid mode. We define a good iteration level and begin to pose bones on the sprite by clicking on the posing option. We try the bones configuration and we see some bad torsion appearing. We can avoid this by adding two bones that block the deformation. Now the result is perfect. To finish this little cinematic, we add a rock falling on the road sign. Thanks for watching and see you soon.